This is a very simple database. We have only three tables. Customers place orders and orders are handled by certain employees. So the structure of the database is as follows. Database tools, relationships, here are the three tables. So it is wise to give every table on top a ID number. In this case, customer ID, in that case, employee ID, and finally, order ID. But if we are going to later on handle orders for certain customers by certain employees, you need that ID here again. These are called foreign keys. This is the primary key. You connect the primary key here, customer ID, with the foreign key there. And that is a one-to-many relationship. One customer has many orders. And something similar for employees. One employee ID has many orders to handle, and that is done there. So instead of making these customer IDs here, drop-down boxes, we are just going to put numbers in there. I would recommend that you do that later on in a form to handle that and not in the tables. If you want to do it in the tables, go ahead, but I won't be with you. So we are going to make a form. I did that already. But in that form, we have a customer ID here. But for people who are going to use this form, it's very hard to find who is that ID number or what is that ID abbreviation. So you want a combo box there. We are going to add that combo box and that will handle the situation. The same here. You, you should really have an employee ID there, but no one knows that number by heart probably. So you need a drop down box, a combo box that is going to do that for you. So now you can always here choose who is the one who ordered all of that and then it will automatically change the customer ID. And who is the employee who is handling that? Let's say that is done by Fuller. Then that will automatically change into two. How did you get those two combo boxes? I'm going to the design screen. And I am replacing this one with a new combo box. So we need to add a combo box. You just activate it. Go to the spot where you want it and implement it. You can go through all these steps here. Um, I'm going to say I will do that on my own, so I'm cancelling this. So we are going to the properties of that unbound box. Right click, properties. And it's probably wise, instead of going to all or whatever, to go to data. The control source behind this box is that ID number. So I go to the drop-down box. That should be the customer ID. But I don't want to see a customer ID in there. I would like to see the names of those customers. So we are going to make a row source that is a query type. Go to the row source and click on the ellipses, on the three dots. So in order to find the customer, we open that table. And we put in there the customer ID in that query and the company name. But you want to make sure that they are in company name order, in an ascending order. So now, if, if I would show you the results of this, this is what it's going to give. So I'm going back to my design screen, save all of this. Okay, And we are going back here, for we are not completely done yet. The bound column is number one, that is that ID number. So that is going to update the control source. But you have to do a few more things and they are probably in the format section. You want to say we have a column count of two, two columns. But you don't want to see the first column. So we are going to say to the column width that should be zero inches, semicolon, and one inch. So now we should be able to manage that. When I go to this screen, 
you will see here that you can choose any kind. You have to widen the box, but I'm forgetting about that. And that is the ID for the cracker. The same story for employee. You could start it from scratch, like we did before, or you can use the wizard. Let's this time do it with the wizard. That's probably easier. But now you understand what is going on in the background. So we insert a new combo box. But this time I'm going to use the wizard. I want the combo box to, ga to get the values from another table or query. Next. From the table employees. Next. What do you want from those two? Employee ID. And then last name and first name. So let's do both. And next. In an ascending order by last name. And then by first name. Next. This is what it's going to do. And it says hide the key column. So that is the column that has the ID number in it. Next. Remember the value for later use? No. Store that value in this field. Remember the value that you are really selecting is not the name of that employee, but the employee ID. Next. Uh, give it a label, whatever you want. Finish. And there we got the end result. So wh what we get now, you probably want it to be much wider. We get now the following result. If you want to show here the last name and the first name, you have to do it manually. Basically like we did it there, but I did already all the work, so I don't have to start from scratch again. I'm just going back to what is in the row source. I go to the properties of that box. See that there select is the query statement or the SQL statement in the background. The bound column is one, but now we have three columns, so we are going to reset that. I click on that select statement, go to the three dots, and you will see it did a lot of work there. So we are going to replace those four columns with a calculated one. I'm going to zoom in there. I will blow up the font for you so you can see it better. So we are going to call that field whatever you want. I'm going to call it name, colon, space, and you want the last name of that employee, space, ampersand, and then you want a little comma and a space, double quotes, a comma, a space, double quotes, space, ampersand, space, and then the field name, first name. You have to look in your table how it's really spelled and called, and this is the end result. Make sure that you do that in an ascending order, otherwise it will do it by employee ID, and this is the end result in the query. So we are saving the changes. If you are going to look now, right here, then you will see that that second column is now showing up and you don't really want that anymore. So we are going back to the properties of that box. Remember that in the format section we regulated how many column counts we had, so I am making that two this time. And the column widths, I don't need that third one, but there is no third one anymore. So now the end result is this. It looks probably a little better, for you don't have the two columns you have to look at, and they are in an alphabetical order, by last name, and then if two people have the same last name, by first name. So you, you did all of this through combo boxes. Now you can basically delete those ID numbers, the customer ID and the employee ID, because you don't really need them anymore, but still the table will save those IDs.